Millions in Syria and Iraq are facing water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. One of the world's oldest and most significant rivers is the Euphrates. At this river, a lot of history was created. The river's basin is shared by five countries and an estimated 23 million people, with Iraq, Syria and Turkey occupying the river's rim. However, the river is not in excellent form. Scientists are shocked at how quickly it is receding. There is more at stake than the river's diminishing flow, according to the predictions linked with the Euphrates drying up in the world's major religions. Many Christians are keeping an eye on the Euphrates River, which is close to drying up and is mentioned in a Bible text concerning it that mentions four fallen angels after it has dried up. Some people believe that the world will end when the river runs dry, but is this really true? What significance does the Euphrates River have? Come along as we delve into the latest Euphrates River discovery and learn all there is to know about it. The biblical Euphrates may be traced all the way back to Adam and Eve's original garden. These varying waters are supposed to carry historical mysteries. They are known as the Mesopotamian Marsh, due to their status as the foundation of ancient Mesopotamia and Babylon, the places where civilization, law, and agriculture are thought to have originated. There was even the rumor that the king of Uruk, Gilgamesh, who lived in the year 400 AD, or 2,500 years before the birth of Christ, was buried beneath the river. The Euphrates River has its origins in Turkey and flows through present-day Syria and Iraq. It flows into the Tigris, which ultimately empties into the Persian Gulf. Its typical area is 190,000 square miles, and it stretches for almost 1,700 miles. It's the longest river in all of Western Asia, since there is typically more precipitation and melting runoff in April and May, the water level rises at that time of year. Along the river, there are some remnants of the original vegetation. In the mountains of southeastern Turkey, the Euphrates River, for instance, passes through Zarek Woods. Along the river's edge, you can also find a wide variety of vegetation, including rose, plum trees, pistachio trees, and oaks. Cereal grains such as wheat, rye, and oats are commonly grown in arid climates. The Euphrates River is not only breathtakingly gorgeous with amazing views, but it also has a lot of historical significance. For instance, numerous ancient cities including Sippar, Nippur, Shurupak, Mari, Ur, and Urkuk existed alongside the river. Wealth was water. It provided the people around the river with rich agricultural soil. Cuneiform writings discovered at Shurupak and pre-Sargonic Nippur were the first to reference the Euphrates River. It is from the middle of the 3rd millennium BCE. Buranuna, a prehistoric Sumerian word, was used to refer to it. The river's name is spelled similarly to Sipar, a historic Iraqi city. There was probably an important and divine relationship between the city and the river. Numerous species of creatures, including snakes, small and large mammals, and fish, can be found in the Euphrates River. There are numerous plant and animal species in addition to various animal varieties. For instance, the Persian sand viper, levantine viper, desert black viper, beaked sea snake, and yellow sea snake are the most prevalent snakes in the Euphrates River. On the riverbank, willow trees and wild grass are present. In addition to vegetation, you can witness animals like hedgehogs, wild pigs, wolves, river otters, and shrews. They usually consume the Euphrates River's water. The Euphrates River is also home to and used by local bird species. It might be hard to imagine that this portion of the river was once a shining example of water management in Babylon, given the way the river currently looks. The army of Cyrus the Great marched through Babylon and arrived at the canals between the Tigris and the Euphrates that were constructed to divert the water from the Euphrates that would otherwise flood the entire nearby land when the snow from the Armenian mountains melted. The basin connecting the Euphrates and Tigris rivers was crossed by numerous large canals as wide as rivers. Every part of the nation received enough watering. The canals also served as a means of transporting crops. The river was also used by religious fighters to promote Islam throughout the Middle East. The Caliphate of Muhammad's son-in-law, Ali ibn Abi Talib, was relocated from Medina to Kufa, 
which is located on the Euphrates River, south of Babylon, in the year 656. Kufa's lush wheat, date palm, rice, and other crop fields stretched for miles on both banks. Many Iraqi cities' identities have been centered on the Euphrates for millennia and continue to do so now. However, analysts are predicting bad things for the river. Why has the Euphrates River been drying up for so long? It has been assumed that this incident is related to the events described in the Bible's Book of Revelation, because there are only a few reasonable explanations for why the river is drying up. Interestingly, because it is stated in the Bible, fewer people find the development surprising because they think it was pretty much a given. The end of the world as predicted in the Bible happening in front of people's eyes is what most frightens them. According to a lot of individuals, Significant passages in the apocalyptic book of Revelation show how essential Iraq is in scenarios involving the end of the world. The Euphrates River is important in the Christian Bible. When this river dries up, it signals the approaching end of the world. This is a forecast of what will occur just before the end of the world. Some claim that the Garden of Eden was situated somewhere between the Tigris and the Euphrates. It is problematic for individuals who live close to the river and depend on it for water and agriculture, even though it is unclear whether the drying of this river represents the end of the world. The Euphrates River cannot be refilled quickly, especially with the record low annual rainfall. The biblical prophecies that refer to the Euphrates River being dry are numerous. Isaiah 11.15 is one such passage. This verse from Isaiah predicts that the Lord will miraculously dry up the Euphrates River. This scripture is not being fulfilled at the present time because the current drying up of the Euphrates River is due to poor rainfall, drought, and climate change, rather than God's doing. In actuality, this line alludes to the start of the Millennium Kingdom. Jesus is the one who extends his hand across the Euphrates River so that all may pass. This cannot be realized in the present because it alludes to the Millennium Kingdom. It is a future prophecy that specifically alludes to Christ's millennium-long reign on earth. Jeremiah 50, 38 contains a second biblical prediction of the Euphrates River's depletion, a drought on her waters. They're going to evaporate because it is a land of idols and those idols will become crazed with fear. When Jeremiah talks about her waters, He's referring to the Euphrates River, which will eventually run dry. It is unclear if this prophecy has yet to be fulfilled, has already been completed, or is a double fulfillment prophecy. And scholars are divided on the matter. When a prophecy is said to have twofold fulfillment, it signifies that not only has it come true in the past, but that it will happen again in the future. We cannot be dogmatic, but it's possible that Jeremiah 50 38 corresponds to the current situation with the Euphrates River drying up. The Euphrates River experienced a drought, just as it did in Jeremiah 50, 38, yet we cannot say with certainty if God caused it now. As previously indicated, there are natural explanations for the drought that has impacted the Euphrates River. It is impossible to claim with absolute certainty that Western Asia is receiving God's wrath. Revelation 16, 12 states, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. This is the third biblical prophecy to mention the Euphrates River. The hardest part of the tribulation is when the sixth bowl judgment occurs toward the end of the tribulation. The population won't have access to water. Therefore, when the Euphrates River's waters entirely dry up, it will be a dreadful judgment. God will supernaturally cause the Euphrates River to dry up as retribution for the people. Throughout the tribulation, God will make every effort to draw his children back to him, but the people will curse God and continue in their sins. The sixth angel, according to this text, cast his bowl into the Euphrates. The river dried up because of the bowl's contents, and prior bowl judgments had contaminated or destroyed most of the world's water supply. This choice will not have any impact on how this water is used. The Euphrates is referred to in the Bible five times as the Great River. It represented the eastern limit of Israel's past. Israel was able to cross the river, which was challenging, and was separated from the promised land of Canaan by a wilderness to the west. Israel found some measure of safety in the river. 
It travels about 2,000 miles toward Palestine before turning southeast and moving toward the Persian Gulf. The kingdoms of China and India were to the east of the Euphrates, which divided east from west at the time Revelation was written in the first century. Cyrus of Persia's army once conquered Babylon by diverting the Euphrates River, which flowed through the city. They marched into Babylon and took control of the city on the dry riverbed. The eastern invader will cross the Euphrates during the Great Tribulation, advance through Babylon, and then enter Palestine. The sixth angel holding the trumpet in Revelation 9.14 issues the order to release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. What does this actually mean? This is the voice that John hears emanating from the four horns of the golden altar, according to Exodus 27. 2. This voice commands the sixth angel, who is holding the trumpet, to release the four angels who were imprisoned at the Euphrates River, which was formerly the boundary between Assyria and Israel. The book of Revelation serves as a reminder that God is ultimately in control of these events, and either announces or authorizes each one. Evil is never allowed to fully rule at the end times. We know they are demons because they are bound. These four angels are held captive in the Euphrates Valley, which has a murky history involving human wrongdoing. Fallen angels known as demons are frequently bound by chains of gloomy darkness. The Euphrates Valley, which is frequently described as being near the Garden of Eden, is most likely the site of the first murder. There have been recent reports of unsettling noises emanating from the river's depths, which may validate this route. This strengthens people's convictions that contemporary events point to Christ's second coming to vanquish his enemies and establish his heavenly kingdom. People have started to express their worries, noting that they had absolutely no expectation that the revelations would make any sense. Other theories connect contemporary events along the Euphrates to political goals and climate change, but the most compelling belief regarding the river is that it is predicted in the Bible. Even if the Euphrates River is disappearing, this does not mean that biblical prophecy is coming true. Before assuming that everything is connected to a kind of biblical prophecy being fulfilled, it is necessary to compare everything to scripture and have a basic comprehension of biblical prophecy. The Euphrates River is currently drying up, and this is most likely a result of natural factors. We experience climate change, environmental issues, drought, and declining water levels because we live in a sinful, fallen world. That it has nothing to do with biblical prophecy doesn't lessen the gravity of the issue. This drought will continue to have an impact on people throughout Western Asia. Due to the drought, there will be a lack of both water and food. Iraq depends on the Euphrates River for its water supply, making it a significant source of fresh water. The drying up of the Euphrates River will have an effect on wildlife in addition to humans who depend on the water. Future environmental harm and destruction to the area will result from this drought. Biblical predictions are something we should be on the lookout for, but we shouldn't develop an excessive preoccupation with them. We can learn about biblical prophecy without being consumed if we have a healthy curiosity about it. Therefore, natural factors like poor rainfall, drought, and climate change are most likely to blame for the Euphrates River drying up. The terrible drought can be seen from space, and many experts believe the river could totally dry up between the years 2024-2040. The once lush, water-abundant, old and historical river has now been reduced to shriveled narrow channels of polluted water bordered by cracked and salty earth. Five million people rely on the Euphrates for their drinking water, and nations like Syria and Iraq also have to deal with very dry conditions and contaminated water sources. As a result of oil leaks brought on by illegal oil smuggling into Syrian government-occupied areas, Residents of Syria have suffered the most from the country's political situation. Many humans have been poisoned by the wastewater concentration in the river, and many fish and animals have also died as a result. The lives of the locals are directly threatened by the leakage of significant amounts of oil derivatives into the Euphrates River, especially those who depend on the river's water as their primary source of drinking and irrigation water. In addition to the spread of several illnesses like hepatitis, leishmaniasis, and other transmissible infections, 
This led to incidents of poisoning, particularly in youngsters, the elderly, and persons with chronic illnesses. Life depends on water, and only places with clean water can support life. Due to their inability to exist and grow without a source of clean water to feed their crops, animals, and families, Syrians have suffered from poor sanitation, disease transmission, and a tough quality of life due to the contaminated waters of the Euphrates River. What can be said about the future of nations and their peoples, whose source of life revolves around a threatening future as the biblical river, with its flowing waters as old as time, eventually dries up? However, the unanticipated result of the Euphrates River drying up has resulted in a number of archaeological findings. Six distinct historical eras have been identified in the Euphrates Riverbed, according to scientists. Sumerian, Akkadian, Assyrian, Greek, Byzantine, and Islamic. Syria built the Euphrates Dam in 1968 without changing the course of the Euphrates River or making lakes in the desert. The most significant ancient sites along the river were submerged by the 100 kilometers long and 8 kilometers broad lake created by the dam, with only a few monuments and artifacts being preserved. An extensive archaeological burial site was recently discovered as a result of the Euphrates Dam Lake's declining water levels in eastern Syria. The Byzantine-era archaeological site in Raqqa province covers a sizable area on the eastern bank of the lake created by the Euphrates Dam, also known as Tabqa Dam. It begins in the Wadi Sal al-Kashab and Shams al-Din region in Raqqa's northwest countryside and extends to the administrative border between Raqqa and Aleppo. This area, which has a large number of graves and is thought to contain hundreds of Syriac Christian monasteries, is becoming increasingly submerged. When it is sunny and the lake water is clear, the graves that are still underwater can be seen plainly. A few tombs have been discovered on the lake's right bank in Raqqa's western district, but the left bank hasn't received as much attention because it's more difficult to dig on due to its rockier terrain. The ancient city of Talbas was made visible in Anna, Iraq, by the Euphrates River's receding waters. According to Iraqi archaeologist Muhammad Jassim, at least 80 historical monuments have surfaced as a result of the Haditha Dam's decreased water level. The Mitanni Empire city, which goes back 3,400 years, was found when floodwaters in the Tigris River Basin subsided, according to the Duhak Antiquities Department in Iraq's Kurdistan province. The ancient city of Zakiko was mentioned in Babylonian writings. It has several structures, including a palace, a sizable fence, and discovered cuneiform tablets. Some of the submerged mud walls that had been sun-dried for more than 40 years astounded the researchers with how well they had held up. This was most likely caused by the earthquake that destroyed the city, because the higher portions of the wall's debris had buried and shielded it for centuries. Five pottery jars containing more than 100 cuneiform tablets, some of which were still in their clay envelopes, were also remarkably well-preserved. Professor of Archaeology at the University of Tübingen, Peter Faltzner, views the survival of unfired clay tablets underwater as a miracle. The team believes that the tablets, some of which may be letters, will reveal further information about the city and its prehistoric people. According to several hadiths attributed to the Prophet Muhammad in Islam, the Euphrates will dry up and disclose undiscovered treasures that will spark conflict and war. With all of this essential knowledge, it is obvious that the Euphrates River was significant not only when it was in all its glory, but also in light of how it is currently drying up and the discoveries that have been made as a result. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.